Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, January 15, 2021. Update on COVID, a lot of stuff happening. Um, here's my little Merlin. Oh, so cute. Anyway, Merlin's now seven and a half pounds. I'm not quite sure if I should be enjoying him licking me, but we'll not go there. Anyway, um, <laughs> now talk about COVID. That's our little puppy, who's made our COVID puppy who we love. And anyway, so uh, about another 3,500 cases in Oklahoma. Several hundred thousand cases in the United States. I believe we crossed over the 400,000 death rate, number of dead today. Um, if not, we're real close. Uh, so COVID's really going on. And there's been some changes in terms of from the CDC, which are a disaster, I think, totally nonsensible. And you're, if you follow the trend, um, it, which is what I'm going to talk about, we're entering a phase of lunacy and reactivity again and failure from governmental entities. I'm going to address the vaccine though because I had several people go, oh did you did they get to you? Did you drink the Kool-Aid on the vaccine? The vaccine for me is a great choice to recommend for people because I've actually spent the time reading about it probably as much as anyone <laughs> can in terms of reading how RNA vaccines work, their history, their mechanism of action, what happened to the patients in the phase one trials, what happened in veterinary medicine with them. So I've done as much reading as you basically can through the medical literature to understand them. I've specifically spent time learning what was the basis of each step of the phases of the trial, and I'll go through that some of that briefly. But a, a messenger RNA vaccine where they take a section of a virus, and it's the section of the virus that reproduces the protein spike or the thing that's going to make it stick to a human cell, that's the receptor site. Taking that little sequence of messenger RNA, giving it to someone, so it's the the it's not active virus, it's just a section of the RNA that produces the protein, which then goes into the cells and then goes within the cell, the endoplasmic reticulum, for those of you who know any microbio, um, or microbiology and, and cellular biology, turns the messenger RNA into protein. That protein is the protein spike. It will populate the outside of your cells. Then your first your innate immune system and then your adaptive immune system react. The innate immune system may make you feel some pain or tiredness or fatigue or flu-like symptoms. And then your adaptive immune system is going to get trained up to make antibodies and train plasma cells and B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes to be tuned in for that um, virus. Just like someone who got COVID, o only you're doing it without getting COVID and you're protected. And the data, when you look at the data, it is a, at day 10, and I'll tomorrow what I'll do, I'm gonna put out, I'll write this all out in some detail and I'll put pictures of all the different graphs. Um, but it's just very black and white for me. You have a 95% vaccine efficacy rate, of meaning 95% of the time you're not gonna get COVID, okay? In all its many forms and strains currently. Um, so, and the reason for that is the antibody, the neutralizing antibody that they're, they've reproduced, they picked it based on the serum levels of convalescent, meaning people who have recovered from COVID, what their plasma had as the, the neutralizing antibody, which is a neutralizing antibody to the S1 receptor binding domain on the spike protein that we've talked so much about. So that area is conserved in terms of it isn't where that's binding, that is not changing so far. So when you hear all these different strain stuff, strain stuff is to get you scared, okay? Oh my God, there's another strain. There's another strain every three to, three to four transmissions. You don't hear about the strains that became less infectious, which has happened at probably much more than ones that are a little more infectious. But this virus, like all flu, cold viruses, mutates constantly. 
some of the strains are a little stronger in terms of being more able to infect you, but no, none of them aren't inactivated thus far by the current antibodies that are formed from being ill or getting the vaccine. So the first problem that I'm having, so that's why you get the vaccine. If you, if you don't wanna get it, get COVID, see what happens. And if you're unlucky, it will be a disaster. If you're lucky, it won't be. Um, but the thing that I'll tell you right now, like I had someone in yesterday for something completely different, but she'd had COVID three weeks ago. She had an incredibly mild course, um, but we had to we had to get a CT on her, blah, 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 for some other stuff. And in the course of doing that, part of her CT evaluation was her lungs. And lo and behold, she didn't even have any lung symptoms. And she has significant lung changes from the COVID that so far she has, she just hasn't noticed, but we can we see them on CT, which isn't a good thing. And you, so that's one thing we're gonna be dealing with with her. And we're dealing with this ground glass thing all the time now in people who didn't get that symptomatic and it's, it's not great. So the bottom line is this, if you get COVID, all the data that I'm seeing and I will put both papers out and they're phenomenal papers shows that you are as immune to COVID as someone can be, period. No question. There's a reason your antibodies go down after four months. That's explained in the second paper, which I'll put out there. It's because your actual immune system or adaptive immune system is all geared up. So you stop making, you don't need the antibodies, but they're ready to be produced. Your T killer cells are ready. But the antibody that you make in the convalescent plasma in an infected person that inactivates the virus is the exact thing that the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine were trying to produce, which is, and they picked their vaccine doses to match getting to the convalescent plasma level of people who'd already had the illness. So if those vaccines work, which they clearly do, they're working because of the convalescent or the antibodies they made to the S1 uh, receptor binding domain, RBD, uh, of the spike protein. So the bottom line is if the vaccines are making you immune, so does getting the virus, which is a canon of immunology. So my question is this, if this is basic immunology, basic, this is basic immunology, why? <laughs> Are we wasting vaccine on people who've been infected? That's my my first thing, um, because there's enough data to support that. And and again, I'm not an immunologist and I'm not an infectious disease doctor. I'm just someone who reads a lot and understands science. It's very clear to me. It's it's so clear and obvious. I can't. It's it's so obvious. And you combine that with people like. Dr. Beatty Stradler from Switzerland, who already has talked and written about up to 30% of the population definitely has cross immunity to COVID from coronavirus. And you see that these people have, who gotten it are immune. And then we have these people who are getting vaccinated like I have, who are gonna have a 95% chance of being immune. Uh, why isn't the focus on getting the vaccine out, 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 instead of scaring us more with new strains that aren't really clinically relevant because the relevance is everybody needs to get vaccinated now and that needs to be the focus shouldn't be on shutting borders like england did or because it's not going to help um limiting travel for u.s citizens it's not going to help it's all about scaring people again it's all about manipulation and so that's the thing that I'm not understanding, why are we, the CDC and these entities, spending time scaring people versus doing their jobs, which is getting the vaccine out and doing an educational program that is understandable to most Americans and most people in the world. Uh, I just am flabbergasted by it, that that isn't the focus. So, and then the final part about that is since the vaccine roll out so slow, why aren't they talking about any outpatient therapies? We're having great success with outpatient therapies. I'm sorry, it may offend people to know that, yes, if your doctor takes care of you, you he, can, he or she can limit your um, disease event by between 95 and 99%. Why aren't we talking about that? I mean, what's, uh, if, if we're not gonna be able to get the vaccine out, the vitamin D data is very, 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 very clear that it's helpful. The zinc data is very clear that it's helpful. I think the melatonin data is very, very clear that it's helpful. Um, 
we want to augment the immune system. So again, we want everyone on a multi, we want them on vitamin D, 5,000 units. We want you on zinc, uh, depending on your weight, 30 to 50 milligrams for four to eight weeks and then to go to every other day. Um, we also want you on know, melatonin to interrupt the cascade of inflammation. Uh, and those are just basic things. And then finally, one of the things you have to keep in mind, which is again, not being addressed at all by the CDC, at all, at all, at all, is a lot of people are dying of thromboembolic events and the, the COVID makes them get clotty. So they get a blood clot in their leg, it goes and hits their lungs, it kills them. Why aren't we saying everybody on fish oil, everybody gets COVID, let's take a baby aspirin. Why, isn't, why aren't they doing that? Because they don't care about you. <laughs> They're only caring about, them, about their political agenda. So I'm sorry if that is tough, but I'm just flabbergasted that the focus is we're gonna shut borders, which is mean control people, to no effect, because closing the borders doesn't help it. The virus is gonna go back and forth. It's gonna travel around the world again. It's how it is. And if you're only exempting, oh, we're gonna let some groups go back and forth and other groups not without testing, What's, what's the point? And we're ignoring all the antibody data. So anyway, I'm babbling. So, so, so the bottom line is this, I will put all these papers out tomorrow. It will probably be pulled off fairly quickly. We'll also put them online at our um, website. Yes, Kim? That's what I was gonna say. I'll, I'll put them there too, Optimal Health Associates. Uh, I would really, really encourage you to get the, the vaccine if you can. It's gonna take several months because the rollout's terrible. Um, the state of Oklahoma is doing a pretty good job at the health department level. Oklahoma County um, is having its issues. They're fairly major. It's probably easier for you if you live in Oklahoma County to call other counties and see if they have a spot for you. I mean, that's going to make me really popular, but it's the, it's the truth. It's probably the same in Tulsa um, because they're autonomous from the state health department. And so the integration issues are 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 there and then the legal requirements for the vaccine in terms of the documentation are very difficult. So it may be easier to get it out of Oklahoma County. I've had a ton of people get it out of Oklahoma County, get the vaccine. Um, and as Secretary Azar said, at this point, the federal government doesn't care if someone gets the vaccine who is in a tier two, they just wanna get as many people vaccinated as they can. So if you can figure out a way to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. It's that simple. I'd like you to get both of them, especially if you're over 55. Uh, but again, that's starting to get into the subtleties of the immunology and I don't wanna get even more trouble than I am now. But the bottom line is the vaccine is the way to go. I can't emphasize that enough. And finally, a big shout out to members of my task force who got some acknowledgement for all their hard work in one of the local papers today, uh, uh, Carrie uh, Bayer. Uh, Chief Nursing Officer at Integris, uh, Julie Watson, CMO at Integris, David Chansome, Head of uh, Infectious Disease at Integris, uh, Dale Bratzler, who's run the COVID ship over at uh, OU, who really is, uh, he's an epidemiologist, very smart man. And then um, Chad Spith, I saw also was, he's CMO of Mercy. Great job, guys and gals. You all have really led the charge and people should, you should be proud of yourselves. And I hope the community appreciates all the hard work you've done. I know all the work, all hard work you've been doing for the last uh, 12 months. So great job and congratulations. So that's it. Good night.